Well, hopefully you did well on quiz 30A that you just took, and um, it was a practice quiz, so we had a few people in here wanted to count, and a few who didn't, that's okay. We all learned from it, and uh, again, the practice of working with these fundamental loci in terms of compound loci now, hopefully uh, was a benefit. Page 184, though, let's practice a few more of these together as a class. Let's practice a few more together as a class now. Page 184, number three. Um, I'm going to do this one at your seats. Locate all points a given distance from a given line, and also a given distance from a given point. By the way, it does not have to be the same given distance. Since it did not say it had to be. Do number three, take just a moment to work on this one. Celebrating Red and Pink Day here at the school, so using pink chalk in honor of Red and Pink Day as we head to the Valentine Day weekend. Or for most of the guys in here, Single Awareness Day or SAD, which is why they're not talking. Because <laughs> they're sad. You're sad. You don't feel like talking. I don't blame them. It looks sad. I wasn't talking to you, Ethan. I was talking to the camera. You're only supposed to talk if I talk to you. second locus, given distance, given point, totally miss. Circle could be tangent, you could get one. Circle could cut through one of the lines twice, or if it were on the line and had just that distance, you could be tangent to both at once, so two, either way you wanted to do that. Three would have to be tangent to one, but cutting through the other. And you could have cutting through both of them. So zero, one, two, three, or four, how many at all? Five possibilities, correct. All right, which ones did you miss, Quentin? Three. You missed the three, all right. How about you, Jamie? Three. The three. Uh, how about you, uh, Genesis? The three. Now, do you remember doing this one actually, though, a few days mm -hmm. ago? We did this exact one, and you know which one we missed the most? Mm -hmm. The three, right? It's just harder to picture tangent and one cutting through the other, but again, that's part of the fun here. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to number five. Number five. And there are two loci, but the first locus is kind of disguised.
first locus on AB. Equidistant from BC and CD. Now, if it had said AD and BC, I would have done a parallel, right? Parallel to these two. If it had said AD and BC, I would have done a parallel, wouldn't I? I didn't say that. It said equidistant from BC and CD. What would be equidistant from these two sides, class? Angle the angle bisector. How many points satisfy, class? One. One. Are there any other possibilities than one? because this can't be extended because it is a side of a parallelogram. And if it were to extend, it wouldn't be AB anymore. It would be AE, for instance. So this one, we could also get zero. It's a trick. And it was kind of tricky there. The main thing was, did you get this picture? How many at least got this picture, all right? That's thinking outside the box a little. But you gotta admit, a really tall, skinny one, it could happen. Now, if it had said AD and BC, it would have been one, and no matter how you drew it, correct? But an angle bisector in a parallelogram can miss one of the sides. After all, it missed AD here because it was longer than it was tall. So if it's taller than it is long, then it'll miss AB instead. Does that make sense? All right, questions on that? All right, let's go on to number seven. Number seven. There are actually three loci in this one. study 53 to 59. You've got time, you've got the rest of the hour. Study as long as you need. Sure, absolutely. I want 100 on this quiz. That's all I ask, that's all God asks. Doesn't demand hundreds, it demands you try for a hundred. What is the first locus here, class? No, it's not the first one. Within a given triangle. So the first locus is all the points outside or on the triangle don't count. They have to be points inside the triangle. Does that make sense? That's your first locus. All right, that's not a huge deal necessarily, but if you were to get a point of intersection out here or on here, you couldn't count it, all right? So that's just something to keep in mind. The next locus is the first one that's really obvious, Jamie. The angle bisector. Right, equidistant from two sides. So you pick any two sides. I went ahead and picked these two, but it does not matter which two you pick. And the equidistant from two sides would be, of course, the angle bisector. Now, none of these points here matter, and this point doesn't matter. So I'm really only focused on these points. But I have a third locus I need to account for. Quentin? Uh, given, given, given distance from the third side. Given distance from the third side. So whichever side you call the third side, we need some given distance. We can do little distance, big distance, medium distance. Give me an actual inches distance to put up here for the chalkboard. 
two inches. Okay, so you get two inches. What would be two inches from this third side? I'm sorry? A line that's parallel. A line that's parallel and two inches away. Or we'll just put D for distance, right? Well, technically though, class two parallel lines. You could do another two inch distance here. And there's that other distance. Now, how many points satisfy all three criteria class? Three, two, one. one. Only oh, this one. The triangle. Because it must be within the triangle. Is there, again, this point can't count. Now, is there any other way this could be drawn? What if you had, like, an obtuse triangle, and you bisected this angle, and you had these parallels. Well, again, within the triangle, it's still one, right? Unless. No, because if I bisect this angle, and then I do given distance this way, I still have one. Genesis, do you see it? What if Quentin had said, let's go with a given distance, not of two inches, but of 20 inches? Well, 20 inches away. Zero. Now, um, you do get an intersection up here, but it's not within the triangle. And you could argue extension through an intersection out here, but it's still not within. So if the given distance happens to be too great to remain within, then you could get zero. So there's zero or one. How many at least got the one that I showed first? Did anyone think of the really big distance pushing everything outside the triangle? Does it make sense now? All right, again, delving a little deeper on some of these. Number nine. Um, this is interesting. Go ahead and read this one aloud, and we'll do this one together. Jamie? Find all points satisfying the distances A and B from the two given points discussed. All right, so we have two given points. Go ahead and put them on your paper, if you would. But um, it does not specify given, it doesn't say equidistant, it says given distances. So here's a point and here's a point, and we've got two given distances, right? We'll call one distance A, and we'll call another distance B. Let's, let's make them different. So we've got one distance A, another distance B. Well, what would be all points a distance A from this first point class? A circle with? A, a is the radius, and then this point has the center, right? And I don't know why I keep making it a D. And then this distance from this point would be another circle, but this time with B as the distance, as the radius, and of course this other point, and uh, we get class. But how many points satisfy both criteria? How many points are this far from A and this far from B? Or this far, A from this point, let's call this point X and this point Y. How many are distance of A from X and the distance of B from Y? Zero. None satisfy both criteria. Any other way we could draw this? Oh, if the two points were to coincide, then we've got X and Y are both the same point. Here's B, and uh, we still have no points. Okay, if A and B were equal, it doesn't say A and B have to be different, do they? It says given distances A and B, but it doesn't say A and B have to be differing distances. So then they could coincide and we would have infinite points. Any other possibilities? Okay, if A were a little bit bigger and B were a little bit bigger so that this circle and this circle intersected twice. Okay, so we could get um, two points of intersection. Anything else? Uh, I was going to say what she said, tangent. Okay, uh, somebody apparently said tangent. I didn't hear that. But yeah, if A and B are just the right distances that the two circles just touch once, right? So we could also get one. So zero, one, two, infinite. Anything else? Could they ever cross three times? circle tangent inside, that would still just be one, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, because a circle, because of that set shape, no, you couldn't ever expand it outward enough where it would intersect the circle other times unless it were the same. So, no, this is it. Zero, one, two, or infinite questions on number nine. All right, look over across the page, page 185, and let's look at uh, where perhaps locus problems could be applied in more or less <coughs> everyday life. Go ahead and read problem number two for us, if you would, Quentin. Show where a long range gun should be located on a low door so that at this range the reach of the two supply pistols, A and B, will be the same. All right, so here's the idea. There's a, uh, we're in wartime, and uh, Quentin has an artillery unit, and he wants to blow up two different enemy supply stations. We have station A, and we have supply station B. And not too far from these supply stations is a particular road. Now, you want to be ideally on a road so you can get out of there quickly, because once you fire, you're now a marked man. They're coming for you, right? So he doesn't want to blow up one supply station, and then have to turn and run. He wants to blow up both of them. But if he comes and aims at A and then drives down the road, stops and takes time to get his bearings and aim at B and line everything up right, he's a sitting duck, right? So he wants to be able to literally position himself so he can turn, fire at one, turn and hit the other without having to reset the distance at all. How would we do this? Where along the road, there's your first locus, should he put his gun? So that whatever distance he's shooting to hit A, he must pivot his gun in the, in the direction of B, and the distance is already perfectly set. What angle by set down? What angle? Or if you can make an angle with A and B. From where? The road. But where on the road? Mm. Of what? So if we were to kind of join A to B like this. Ah, so anywhere right here, any one of these points that's in the perpendicular the bisector would be the same distance to A as it is to B, correct? We're really just finding the locus of points equidistant from two given points. He puts the gun there, aim, fire, turn, aim, fire, get out of there. He has a longer life expectancy, and he gets a medal for blowing up two enemy supply stations, and he's a hero. And he gets a big pension. And he remembers his math teacher in his old age. It's great. Everyone's a winner. All right, except the people at the supply stations. But they were bad guys anyway. All right, um, questions on this. All right, Brett can go ahead and clear this except for a pen. Uh, number three is a little bit less practical nowadays, but it's a fun one nonetheless. Um, and uh, let's see, Genesis, if you'll read number three. A pirate lands in the center of the field between two intersecting areas. 50 feet from one row, 30 feet from a tree, which stood by the other row. Show how to locate the hiding place. All right, now, my, when I was in geometry years ago, about 15 years ago or so, um, no, more like 18 years. Anyway, it was a long time ago when I was your age. And um, I was using the same book my older sister used here before. She was one year ahead of me in school. And we had the same sketch. It was a different book, but they had the same sketch, except she had drawn a little, like, the pirate talking, where's my loot? So anyway, th I love this problem just because it brings back that memory. But anyway, he, uh, he buries some treasure in a field between two intersecting roads. He put, does it 50 feet from one road and 30 feet from a tree which stood by the other road. And we have to figure out where is his loot. So let's start by taking our two intersecting rows. This is row one. That is row two. They didn't say they had to intersect perpendicularly. And there's a tree that stands by the second row. So let's put a tree by the second row. We want to help him find his loot. Well, the first locus is 50 feet from road one. How would I find 50 feet from road one? Anyone? A perpendicular to road one? No, two parallels. Two parallels, right? You're finding given distance, 50 feet from a given line, road one. So we want, uh, let's just make up a number. Let's say this is 50 feet. And 50 feet. All right, so there's our first locus. Somewhere along these lines is where our loot, or his loot, is buried. Second locus, somebody besides Quentin. 
What is it? 30 feet from the tree which stood by the other From this tree. 30 feet from the tree. What do you think, Genesis? The same thing he did for the 30 feet just on the road. Well, but that was from a road. This is just from a tree. One lonely little tree. Just 30 feet from the tree. So draw a parallel and 30 feet away from the tree. Ethan? Like a circle? A circle. Because the tree is basically a point, isn't it? And you want 30 feet, a given distance, from a point, the tree. So we would want, let's see, if we said this is 50 feet, then this would be about 30. So something like... Um, this, right, with a 30-foot radius, and the tree is the center. So, there are two places the pirate's going to have to dig up his treasure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Unless, unless this tree were exactly 80 feet from this road, because then you've got 50 feet and 30 more feet. So 50 feet, 30 more feet. If this is where it is then there's only one spot it could be. Now, he did bury loot, and he did get those measurements, so the tree can't be more than 80 feet from the, other, from the first road, because otherwise the circle and the lines wouldn't intersect, and then we'd really be in trouble. Is there any way to get four points here? Like, what if the tree had been like right at the intersection almost? Well, then would the 30-foot radius hit these 50-foot lines? No. So no, you're not going to ever get four points. Like if the radius were more than 30, if the radius were 60 feet from the tree, well now a point somewhere near a road could actually hit four places you have to dig up his loop. But uh, anyway, again, I'm not advocating the regularly digging up things near intersections, trying to find pirate loot. But uh, everyone's apparently watching him because you see there's a traffic jam there, and he looks very confused, and which I think is why my sister felt inspired to say, where's my loot? Uh, but anyway, questions on this. <laughs> questions on this. All right, well, that first quiz, some of you did great. Some of you maybe, you know, wish you could have a second shot at it. Well, now you can. Clear your desk, except for a sheet of paper and a pencil. We're going to give you a second shot at a compound locus quiz. You're going to take another one. <laughs> Two for the price of one. So clear your desk, except for a clean sheet of paper and a pencil, everything else away. If you did great on the first one, you have a chance to do great on the second one also. If you bad on the first one, you have a chance to redeem yourself and feel good about yourself going into a three-day weekend. Yes. If you were suicidal thoughts, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of our sad gentleman in the room. So. <laughs> Sometimes it helps to talk these things out. All right, anyway. First last name at the top of your paper along with today's date, which is still 2-12-21. 2-12-21. Not quite Valentine's Day yet. And this time you have five compound locus problems. Last quiz had four, this one has five. Like the last quiz, draw a sketch and write the number of possibilities. Be sure to think of all possibilities. There is no homework for this lesson. However, in the next lesson, which will be for you all Tuesday, you'll need to make sure you have your compass and straight edge because we're going to resume constructions. But no homework over the weekend.